Welcome back to another predestined, predestined kingdom ministry or ministries international video or videos. I'm Kenithia, Kenithia Johnson, Kenithia J. Welcome back. Glory, hallelujah. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your time and your presence and your Holy Spirit that's here and your angels. I give you all the glory. Father who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Honor as it is in heaven. Give me this day my daily bread. Forgive me of my debts. Forgive me of my debts. As I forgive my debtors, and lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory. Amen. The Lord says when he says posture, stand in position, that's being right where he tells you to be at when he tells you to be there. Okay, it don't always mean you at your altar, hands down on your knees. You could be in your car. You could be anywhere. And so the Lord just wanted to break down what he says when he, when he means get in position. That's wherever he tells you to be at during that time. And that's why it's very important. Father, I pray I'm right where I'm supposed to be, when I'm supposed to be there on time. You have to say certain foundation prayers because... When you when you're moving in the will of God, it's really it it looks very foreign to His own people, and so they had they're coming against you, thinking you're wrong, and then later on God is going back to correct them, and then they're acting like they was never wrong. So the Lord just wanted me to put that out there. Being in position, yes, you need a yes, you need to be at your altar as much as possible. But being in position so you can receive what the Lord has for you is being right where you're supposed to be when the Lord calls you to be there. So it don't always be like in one place. That's my point. It's not always in the worship position that you hear from God. Sometimes you could sit up at your altar, trust me from experience, you could be at your altar for a whole hour and not hear nothing. And the moment you get up and start cleaning or doing something, the Lord got a whole page to tell you. So being in, being is kosher by. And so that goes to trusting God in opposition. And what I was piggybacking off of was Bishop T.D. Jake's wilderness season. So some of us, at first, I was like, I'm not in no goddamn wilderness. I'm receiving the promises of God. That devil is a liar. You know, come change that. But no, some of us are in a wilderness. A wilderness is a neglected or abandoned area of a garden or a town. Also, it is a position of disfavor, especially in a political context. Ah, being disfavored neglected or abandoned in any area so it could be with relationships it could be with money it could be with needing a car maybe you feel neglected you've been trying to do everything you got partially half the money saved up it's still not enough you know that's what being in the wilderness is maybe it is a season in time where you feel like you don't hear from the lord or you feel like he's not speaking to you but in naturality, God is always speaking some kind of way. He be speaking. And so, what is your wilderness? Either way, we have to trust God during the opposition, during persecution. So, I had a scripture in Proverbs. And then I have a scripture in Daniel. It's Proverbs 21, verse 19. Better to dwell in the, um, through 21. 
Better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and angry woman. There is desirable treasure and oil in the dwelling of the wise, but a foolish man squanders it. He who follows righteousness and mercy finds life, righteousness, and honor. When you're in the wilderness, we have to trust God in opposition. And Daniel 3, verse 18, I'm just reading. I'm not. They didn't say all of that, but the Holy Spirit is. But even if he does not, we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. So some of us are in the wilderness because of past mistakes. And it's still just costing us all of these four years to get out because of whatever reason. Whether it's people or whether it's the Lord allowing the people. We're still in some kind of wilderness. Are you serving the right God? Are you serving the Lord God Jesus Christ? Have you given your life to him? Because that will cause you to stay in the wilderness. Or is he ordering your steps every day? Have you opened up your heart to meditate on his word day and night? To receive his Holy Spirit? Now, what's your daily routine when you wake up? Do you pray? Do you journal to the Lord? Do you give him some of you or all of you first? Do you worship? You know... We really do cause wilderness seasons on ourselves. Sometimes God will just lead you there. Some of us, the Lord just, and this season and time, the Lord just doing what he doing. Some of us, he really is leading into a wilderness. You know how when Jesus went to the, to the uh, when Jesus had the 40 days in the wilderness and the Holy Spirit led him there? To be tempted every single day for 40 days by the devil. Every day God led Jesus into that wilderness. That's my point. Some of us are in the wilderness because we're supposed to be there. But it's not easy. I don't know. Maybe, you, maybe you're in a situation like me where you know you can't really provide for yourself. But God keep making a way every day. Even though the people complain and telling you you got to go and get out. Especially because you might be expecting supernaturally from the Lord. <laughs> What's your wilderness? Maybe, I don't know. Hmm, that's a good one. Maybe it feel like you can't get a man. Every time you date, you date. It just don't be working out. Something, maybe they got this ex-girlfriend still around. I ain't playing that no more. I just went through that. All that public embarrassment. This ex, she got to stay around because who do you think you are? You're not that important. Leave that man right where he at. I'm telling you. I had that happen to me twice. Leave that man alone. Leave them alone. It's better to be in the wilderness with God than to be with uh, somebody who's not fully there with you. Like you got them and somebody else got them. Like we're not sharing no man over here. Stop. So maybe, you know, you, you could be in a financial wilderness. Whatever your wilderness is. You have to trust God at the end of the day. You have to trust the Lord. Make sure you're not serving or worse. See, this is a thing, especially when it comes to entertainment, celebrities. It's like y'all open up y'all spirit too much to the other universe. It's like because y'all worship the universe more so than God himself. It's like, oh, what is the universe saying? Like, what? Like, <laughs> it's God first, okay? And then we just say thank you. We don't even, we like, no, it's too much. So when you worship the earth, that's one. 
It's like you're making the earth, the universe, your God, instead of the creator himself who made the whole earth. So some of, a lot of us, or I can say us, but y'all are in the wilderness because of false worshiping, having crystals, doing enchantry on people, having wicked ways. You know, there are prayers in here that say, let the wicked fall into their own trap. Let Ed by let jealousy moves go back to cinder. <laughs> you got to improvise in my prayers. There are, not there are, but we are not to worship any other God than the Lord God, Jehovah, Jesus Christ, the Lord God, Jesus Christ Almighty. And when you start opening up to crystals and all of that, you're opening up your spirit into a whole nother gateway that is not of God, pretty much. It's just, that's not the way the Lord God do things. And at the end of the day, you just got to make a choice. You can ask questions. You can say, I was raised like this. You can say, I've been doing this. But ultimately, that's what dying to self is. That's you choosing not to do anything your flesh would have wanted you to do in the first place. So you, you, you die to yourself because now you're all about Jesus. It's not about what Kenithia wants no more. But is that really who and where I'm supposed to go in the Lord? That's what dying to self is. So make sure you're not doing none of that. Seeking after witch doctors. You know, when you do all of that stuff, you put a curse. Welcome as you come in and go. You put a, a, a curse on your family. And, and every curse be lasting for like four generations. A thousand years. A thousand years. Says the Lord. It's a thousand years to him. Four generations is a thousand years to the Lord. To see what kind of time we're on so don't do the way oh don't do psychics if you go to a psychic you're opening up your 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 spirit to them people i went to a psychic it didn't get me nowhere you're not supposed to do that i went to a psychic years ago before i um answered the call before i answered the call i went to a psychic don't do that you, it really do be consequences. And it be more so smaller and then it turns into big. Because at first you don't even know the Lord judging you and dealing with you. Like stuff just keep happening. It could be so small till one day you look up. This going wrong, that going wrong, that going wrong. And then when you go seek the Lord, what does he say? Remember that time you went to that psychic? <laughs> remember that time you put that spell on that remember, coach your body. remember you tried to kill this person with a love potion a love spell you wanted them hey the lord the lord sees everything and so we ought to trust god in opposition especially during a wilderness season i had a test on sunday I was so, oh man, it messed up my whole church service, that testing, I hated it. I, oh my gosh, I was snapping under my breath so, so my summed up, so I wasn't using profanity like that, but I was very upset. And so what the Lord showed me was that it was a test in the middle of me crying out to the Lord. Because I'm, anytime you tell me something, I'm going back to the Lord. Okay, well, Lord, you saying this through this person now, how we fix it? Because at the end of the day, it's you and the Lord. You should always be able to do that. Whenever somebody says anything, you should be able to go in prayer to the Lord and say, okay, well, Father, this is what they're saying. You were there. Let's fix it or let's make sure they're not really talking to me or whatever the case may be. But it was a test nonetheless. I probably almost felt it. I was very upset. <laughs> Oh, uh, but the Lord said I passed it. It was a test. And that's another message. Praise God. He, and right like hours later, because I work really hard to not mess up people's church service or be the problem. 
I try really hard not to be the problem, and sometimes I just be being a problem, and that's when I know it's the devil. Spiritual discernment. That's how I know who's speaking to me and what, what, because the Lord knows I'm ready, ready. He keeps saying I'm ready. So anyway, it was a test, and you passed, and your blessings are coming. Okay, it was a test, and you this this is not for everybody in the wilderness. But to some, when the Holy Spirit hits you, the Lord says it was a test. You passed, and your blessings are coming. And so that's what trust in God and opposition is. Sometimes you don't have money to eat. You may have to eat French fries like me some nights because of, 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 of the leading. You don't even have a car to get to no job or no real help. People that really want to help you out of love. You got to trust God in the opposition. I pray I have a blessed day. Okay, this is a good one. Shalom.